Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sarah from DentaBest, your best online mentor for the preparation of INBD 8 and AFK exam. Today, student, I have taken a topic that is very important, uh, peri implantitis. Let us see what are the important uh, topics or concepts we are going to review here. Students, let us see what are different contents we are going to cover in the peri implantitis video. First of all, we'll do the introduction. We'll see some etiological risk factor that is associated with peri implantitis, the classification, clinical feature, histopad, diagnosis, prevention and criteria for successful implant, the management and the conclusion. When we talk about the peri implant diseases, there's actually the inflammatory process in the tissues which are surrounding the implant. That is the definition we have. In the peri implantitis mucositis, a reversible inflammatory process in the soft tissue is seen surrounding the functional implant. So, peri-implantitis student, it is defined as an inflammatory process affecting the tissue around an osseointegrated implant in the function resulting in the loss of the supporting bone. So if you look at the picture here, you can see healthy peri-implant mucosa. Then in this picture, you can see peri-implant mucositis that have started the inflammation. In this picture, you can see the inflammation has spread around the implant that is called as the peri-implantitis. So, student, the rich mucosa we have in the edentulous hard tissue portion of the alveolar process is covered by mucosa that is around 2 to 4 millimeter thick. It is lined by keratinized epithelium. It is rich in fibroblasts and the collagen. Few inflammatory cells can be still seen scattered adjacent to the basement membrane. In the peri-implant mucosa that we have after implant uh, installation, the transmucosal passage is formed and the mucosa adapts and peri-implant mucosa is being established. The mucosa with similar feature to gingiva around the tooth that is lined by keratinized oral epithelium. So, the peri-implant mucosa is directly in contact with the bone, direct bone to the implant contact, while physiological periodontium has an anchoring system of cementum, alveolar bone and the desmodontic pedial fibers. Subepithelially more collagen and less fibroblast and vessels are seen here. When physiological periodontium subepithelially more fibroblast and vessels are seen. Parallel collagen fibers in relation to implant surface in peri-implant mucosa. While in physiological perio you have dentogingival, dentoperiosteal, transeptal and circular fibers which are oriented. If you can look at the picture here, this is a titanium implant. You can see this is a circular epithelium here. This is the junctional epithelium at the base of the pocket. Then we have the connective tissue. We have the bone. We can see the implant is directly fused with the bone. That is your osseointegration. Now, this is your normal in which you have the enamel here. You have the circular epithelium. You have the junctional epithelium. But you can see here the tooth, right? This is not fused with the bone. You have the pedial intervening. You have the cementum intervening. And this is the bone. So, peri-implantitis student etiology, it can be bacterial infection, biomechanical overload, or other cofactors like relationship between surface roughness of the implant and bacterial colonization. Other risk factor definitely is smoking, poor hygiene, history of periodontitis, and compromised host response and systemic diseases like diabetes. Or traumatic surgery can lead to peri-implantitis, erogenic causes, soft tissue defect. You can see here, failed implant due to cementitis. The pathogenesis is plaque accumulation firstly start around the implant. The inflammatory cell infiltrate in the connective tissue that will lead to apical migration of the plaque and visible destructive changes they start around the implant. Excessive mechanical forces that lead to peri-implantitis. Excessive mechanical forces will cause high stress and micro fractures in the coronal bone to the implant surface and persistent excessive biomechanical forces will lead to loss of osseointegration integration around the neck of the implant and bone loss bone loss will progress further and combination of bacteria related and loading related will lead to bone loss. The classification of peri-implantitis early when periodontal pocket depth is greater than equal to 4 millimeter along with bleeding and separation on probing bone loss is less than 25% of implant length. Now the moderate peri-implantitis when pocket depth is greater than equal to 6 millimeter, probing depth is greater than equal to 6 millimeter, bleeding and separation or probing and bone loss is greater than 25 to 50 percent of implant length. But severe periodontitis where the probing depth is greater than millimeter, bleeding and or separation of probing and the bone loss is greater than 50 percent of the implant length. Now classification of peri-implant bone loss according to Speakerman, class 1 is slight horizontal bone loss with minimum peri-implant defect, class 2 is moderate 
horizontal bone loss with isolated vertical defect and class 3 is moderate to advanced horizontal bone loss with broad circular bone defect while class 4 is advanced horizontal bone loss with broad circumferential vertical defect as well as loss of oral and vestibular bony wall. So clinical feature of periimplantitis progressive increase in probing depth, separation and exudation from the periimplant space and bleeding on probing. The clinical appearance of inflamed tissue will have bleeding, swelling, color change, separation, plaque calculus accumulation and progressive loss of supporting bone and follow up radiographs when you take. You can see implant on 3-6 two years ago. Bone loss around the implant of 3-6 after two years ago. You can see here lots of bone loss. You can see the picture here. So microscopic examination of periimplantitis will reveal large inflammatory cells inflate infiltrate in the mucosa and according to the study conducted by Patchelli on 230 retrieve implant to periodontitis, the major inflammatory cell that you see are macrophages, lymphocytes and plasma cells in the connective tissue. So diagnosis of periimplantitis student is done based on clinical and radiographical evaluation. So clinical assessment is by doing the probing in the periimplant area, periimplant radiography. Clinical assessment you will see swelling, redness of periimplant tissue from the infection. You also see evaluation of plaque, it's accumulated around the implant tissue. Separation is a sign of inflammation. Mobility of the implant is the lack of osseointegration. integration. Mobility mainly can be detected in final stages only. You can see the picture here. You can see all the redness of peri-implant tissue. And also there is a calculus buildup. In this picture also you can see here. Circumferential bone defect around the implant, also called as a mode defect. You need to probing with a blunt straight plastic perioprobe. Assessment of probing depth, hyperplasia, recession, bleeding and separation. The probing depth can be 4 mm or more. You can see putting a plastic instrument, not a metal because metal definitely scratch the implant. In radiography, you will see assess the bone loss around the implant. In conventional radiograph, minor changes in bone morphology may not be noticed until you reach significant level. Digital subtraction radiography will also increase the sensitivity and has been successfully used. You can see the picture here. This is the implant and you can see clearly or there is a bone loss around the implant here. There is a pocket formation on the implant that will create like a pothole like defect. So prevention is the, our main goal not to let the periimplantitis to happen by regular dental visit, education and ask the patient to properly clean the implant area. Also for prophylaxis you have removing the plaque deposit around the implant with a plastic scaler. Plaque control procedure, routine radiograph. Mechanical instrumentation or affected area possessing surgical flap access should be performed. What is the criteria when you say your implant is successful? When the implant is very immobile, absence of any peri-implant radiolucency, absence of any pain, infection, neuropathy or no paresthesia. Peri-implantitis is mainly managed by using specific treatment strategies depending on etiology of the problem. This is a protocol for the management of peri-implantitis mucositis. It depends upon probing depth. If it is greater than or equal to 3 mm, but this absence of plaque, bleeding on probing is negative, you don't do any treatment. But there is a presence of plaque, then protocol A is to do mechanical debridement plus do polishing. But if the probing depth is 4 to 5 mm, then you do protocol B, you have to do antiseptic cleansing along with mechanical debridement and polishing. But if the probing depth is greater than 5 mm, there is bleeding on probing, but there is no bone loss, then you can see the protocol C which include protocol A, B and C that is local or systemic antibiotic therapy and refer to implantologist or to a specialist. But if probing depth is greater than 5 mm, bleeding on probing is present and the bone loss is less than equal to 2 mm, then it will require protocol C along with A and B. And if probing depth is greater than 5 mm, bleeding on probing is present and bone loss is greater than 2 mm, then it's protocol B which includes regenerative or resective surgery and refer to a specialist. There are five concentration therapy of peri-implantitis. First of all, removal of bacterial biofilm in the peri-implant pocket and decontamination surgery. Then we do the decontamination of the surface. Correction by reduction elimination of site that cannot be adequately maintained by oral hygiene procedure. Establishment of effective plaque control regime. Initial therapeutic phase in treatment of peri-implantitis. Then there is a surgical phase and there is a maintenance phase. Initial therapeutic phase is occlusal therapy, anti-infective therapy, systemic antibiotics, implant surface preparation. Occlusal therapy will lead to excessive force which can lead to peri-implant bone mucosa. 
you have to remove them. Change in processes, design, improvement in implant numbers and position. Anti-infective therapy, removal of plaque deposit with a plastic instrument, polishing of all accessible surface with pumice and debridement of peri-implant biofilm like using a plastic curette. Irrigation of pocket with help of 0.12% chlorhexidine or local antimicrobial which may be sufficient for re-establishing periodontal health or may be followed by a surgical phase. Systemic antibiotics like you are giving the metronidazole uh, 250 mg TD for 10 days or once daily combination of metronidazole 500 mg and amoxicillin 375 mg for 10 days. Shallow peri-implant infection may be successfully controlled only using antibiotics. By the use of air powder abrasive, which is mixture of sodium bicarbonate and sterile water, can also be done by application of tetracycline HCL for 30 to 60 seconds. Carbon dioxide lasers have also been introduced to clean the implant surface. Surgical phase is peri-implant resective therapy, peri-implant regenerative therapy or re integration. Peri-implant lesion with horizontal bone loss or moderate vertical bone loss less than 3 mm suitable for resective therapy where you are raising a full thickness flap this is the surgical area then you degranulate the defect bone around the implant is recontoured implant surface is prepared and repositioned apically and sutured regenerative therapy you are using a guided bone regeneration in case of moderate to deep vertical defect remove the granulation tissue after elevation of flap then you use a bone graft or a barrier membrane membrane extended 3 to 4 mm beyond the defect and flap is closed so you can see the regenerative therapy you are performing using titanium granules or guided bone regeneration. Now, re integration Main objective is de novo or a new bone formation at the site where it has been lost, the osseointegration. Increase in height of bone leads to marginal shift of mucosa enhances soft tissue aesthetic. Maintenance, very important with the patient. He has to do plaque control properly, tough, toothbrush with soft manual round filaments, dentifrices, guard strip floss, threaders, to clean crossbar of subperiosteal implant and proximal surface or abutment, use of irrigators by therapist, frequent recall visit at three months for the first year and semi-annual basis, evaluation of oral hygiene and to check for occlusal harmony. Implant and process stability overall soft and hard peri-implant tissue health should be evaluated along with radiographic evaluation.